Hello! It has been a while. I think it's been years. Um, so welcome, probably to most of you, just welcome. Welcome back if you've happened to find this video um, and you've watched any of my videos in 2020. In 2020, I started doing budget videos because I love watching budget videos um, and I had more time um, than I had in a while, but you know, for a lot of reasons, I stopped doing them. Um, and I, but I think I'm ready to start again. So I thought that a fun first video back would be just an overview of my budget spreadsheet and my budget philosophy and how I personally budget, um, because I do things a little bit differently than a lot of other um, budgeting and um, frugality people who share their budget online. Not that the, not that either of us are wrong. It's called personal finance and you do have to find a system that works for you. But I started my budgeting journey probably, you know, when I was in college, like some started my budgeting journey probably around like 2010, 11, if not earlier. And at that time, I didn't have, I wasn't, I basically was just trying to figure out how to or use my money um, or keep track of my money as a college student and a graduate student. And I wasn't like reading financial books. So I developed systems that kind of worked for me that made sense. Like I can't spend money I don't have and things like that. And so the way that I thought about my budget was really just, whoa, what works for me? And then as I started working as a professional career, I began learning more from other people and I kept some things that I developed on my own and some things, but adapted them somewhat. But there's some things that I still think of a little bit differently from other people. Um, so I figured that if I do a little budget spreadsheet tour and explain this now, then as I'm doing my budget videos, I won't feel the need to repeat the same things over and over again, making those videos super long. Um, so let's just jump in. What we see now is my monthly budget overview, and this is one of the most used pages in my budget. And if you have seen any of my videos before, this will look very familiar to you. So at the top, I just put um, the dates of this month because I do budget according to months, as well as a reference to the previous month's spreadsheet. This just helps keep my formulas working so that a lot of this is automated and I don't have to do the math myself. One reason I choose to use a spreadsheet is when I first started, I did try to have a written budget in like a um, ledger, an accounting ledger that my mother gave me, and I just couldn't keep up with it. And I hated having to like add up all of the math. Even if I had a calculator, I always got something wrong. So having a budget spreadsheet, I don't have to do the math because I just had to put in the formulas once in it. Now I've had this spreadsheet for so long that it's very automatic. Um, then I also have a notes section and that's just where I keep note of anything that's a little bit different where if I came back a year from now and I was looking at my budget, it's like, what is going on? I know. So for instance, in November, um, I wanted to do something, but I didn't have funds in the right budget for it. I didn't have enough funds in my man money budget. So I took a note that I hadn't been using my professional development budget. So I moved $150 from professional development to my mad money budget. Um, and that's why I did that. So I took a note that I did that. So in a year when I come back and it's like, why does, why did I spend so much money in mad money when I didn't have it and still have money extra. I know what happened there. So that's my little notes section. Then I have my income section. You'll notice I have two columns. I have last month, which is the money that I spend now. And then this month, which is what I'm going to spend next month because I budget according to what I earned the previous month. And I do this mainly because I don't like the guesswork. I know a lot of people have like estimated an actual in their budget. That has never made any sense to me. I want to know, like, I'm not planning to spend, I can't plan to spend money I don't have. I can only plan on how I can spend my money. And that's just my personal way that I've always looked at my money. Um, so I will say that that was always easy for me, especially after I started working. And even as a student, I would get like payouts from scholarships and grants and things like that to begin a semester. So I had a huge chunk of money to budget out month to month. 
And then when I started working, I got paid once a month near the end of the month. Um, so it's always been easy for me um, to do it that way. And I completely understand why people don't do it that way. It's just this is what has always made the most sense to me. And it never was difficult for me. But um, it looks like I haven't earned any money this month, but I have. <laughs> it's the middle of the month I have. So now I earn, I get a paycheck every, uh, um, I get two paychecks a month. Um, I have a line for my paycheck. I am salaried. And so this, my paycheck doesn't normally change very often. Something that I added recently this year was a line for side hustle. I don't really have a side hustle. I've been doing several things um, this year because one of my goals this year was to start earning some money outside of my day job because I don't get paid a ton and I'm completely like, I don't have a partner or anything. So all of, I have to fund my life completely on my own on a not super high income. Like I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm low income, but I do not have very high of an income. Um, so I have a line for side hustle. What I've been doing mostly this year was donating plasma. Um, I don't know that I'll earn as much from donating plasma next year as I did this year. So I might have to come up with some other things to do, but I do have a line for that. And those are the two lines that I um, only spend what I have last month. Then I have a few other things that I will just spend the same month I get them, mostly because um, they generally go to savings or somewhere else. So my bank interest, I have a high yield savings account that I earn a fair amount of interest on. And that usually goes to one savings category or another. So I just decide it immediately when the interest hits my account. Have a line for reimbursements. So this is like, this is mainly work or if like I front a friend or something and I expect to be paid back. So essentially I just keep track of where some of that money is coming from in my budget so that I know. And then surprise is just any income that I did not expect. So maybe somebody just gave me a $20 bill or something. Um, Cause I do try to track all of my money. If I get a gift card, I usually don't track it. Um, but any cash or something that I'm gifted or when I like to, to keep track of. So I just have a little surprise category that I use less often than I used to because a lot of that money is now going into side hustle. But um, after the income section, I have these sanity checks, I call them. So it just, um, at the end of the month, essentially it helps me determine if I have extra money that I should assign somewhere um, and things like that. So money that I thought I was going to spend that I did not actually spend, I can decide to add like to an additional savings goal or something. And as I'm budgeting, it helps me keep track of how much money I have left to add to my budget. So that's what I mean by sanity checks. And then we get to the expenses. And here I'm going to mention, I do have a few lines hidden on my budget. So you'll, I, I actually have a line for totals on my expenses and my savings goals. And I've hidden a few of my budget categories. Um, for for privacy and things like that I'll, all i'll say about that is the categories i have hidden are not anything to do um, with my day-to-day -day spending they're categories that are earmarked um, for people or organizations other than myself and that's all i'm going to say about that so I have my expenses subdivided. I have what I think of as fixed expenses. So these are things that I know I'm going to spend this pretty much the same amount on every single month. So um, one change that happened recently is I bought a condo, which I'm actually not living in yet. I'm living with my parents right now. Um, but I do have, I pay the same on my mortgage every single month. I have a line item for storage. So because I'm living with my parents, I have a storage unit with some of my things in there. I'm expecting this to go away in early 2024, but for now I have to pay for my storage unit. I have a line for condo fees. So this is both my condo fees and my um, insurance. And then a line item for food, which some people might wonder why food is a fixed essential. And this is just something this is one of the weird ways that I budget that just it's it worked out for me personally. Um, so my food budget is both eating out and groceries. And for a lot of reasons, so mental health reasons, budgetary reasons, I always struggled um, with my food budget. 
um, and figuring out how much I should allocate towards eating out and how much I should allocate towards like groceries. I was, especially with mental health, there would be some months where I would be, I would be really struggling and I'd be spending a ton more on eating out than I felt comfortable with. Um, and then I'd also be spending a lot of grocery on groceries and what ended up being easiest for me was just say, this is how much I can spend on food. And if I spent a million dollars on eating out, as long as it's, as long as I also budgeted a million dollars for food in general, that's fine. And no, maybe I'll just spend less on groceries. Um, I also, I have it in fixed, even though I might spend, like I'm never going to spend exactly $200 on food, but when I had it in rolling essentials, if I got in the negative, I didn't feel like I could buy enough food the next month. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to budget a little bit more than I think I'm actually going to spend on food, but it won't roll over. And then even if I do end up overspending, I just account for it in my budget and the next month is a fresh month. So for me, um, food was complicated. <laughs> And having it be fixed the same amount every month was just a lot easier, erased a lot of guilt. And so that's why I only have one food budget and it is a fixed expense. That's just something that worked best for me. And I've been doing it this way for years and years and years now. And I see, I feel no need to change it. It is a little bit low right now. Um, it's actually higher than it was when I was living alone, but I live in a higher cost area now. And we all know that food has gotten way expensive since like 2021, 2022, food, food prices just rocketed. So this is a little bit low. And when I move back out from my parents' house, I do expect it to go higher. But what I have been doing is I do a little bit of grocery shopping for the household and then anything that's left over, I give to my parents. And that's what I've been doing recently. But again, I expect in early 2024, it's just going to be a regular food budget for feeding myself. I have a line for internet. I'm not paying for internet right now because I'm living with my parents and they aren't asking me to really help much with expenses. I do pay for, I do help them with food costs and with some other things, but I just left internet in there. It's been there since I've been living with my parents and I just left it there. I think just so I wouldn't have to add it in back later. Um, after fixed expenses, I have rolling essentials. And these are things where I spend, like I think consider them essential expenses, but I am not going to spend the same amount on them every month. But I don't want to have to go through and recalculate them every month. So instead, I, I call them rolling essentials. Some people may think of this as more as uh, like sinking funds. But I just started thinking them as rolling expenses when I was a young adult and it's worked for me and it never changed. So for utilities, generally what I've done is at the end of every year, I take the average of what I spent on utilities every month and then add like five or $10 just for a safety buffer. Um, and when I bought my condo and started paying utilities on my condo, um, I did something similar. I actually started really, really high and right now it's around 70. Um, but you can see this month I actually spent, for me, this is high. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's really high. I know a lot of people spend a lot more, but it's a small condo and this is only, um, electric and gas because water and trash are covered by my HOA fees. Um, anyway, I think it's going to have to be higher than 70. Um, but anyway, I'll calculate that. Then I have my cell phone, which um could it could be a fixed expense but i am planning on going on to a plan that i pay once a year and i've been on that type of plan before i switched recently to a month to month um but it is also pay according to what data you use so i also like adding a little bit of extra to my cell phone bill so when i need a new cell phone i can pay for it out of here rather than financing it and having the um, service provider do that for me Next, I have transportation. Um, transportation is actually a big budget, and you might notice that I have a lot less like individual budgets on here. And I'll show you how I keep track of more like specialized things. For me, it's much easier to think for my budget to think in broad categories and then keep track of really, really specific categories elsewhere. And that way, um, again, I don't have to change. 
like as when I do my budget every month, there's really very, very little tweaking I do when I plan out my budgets for every month. Um, because I have so many like expenses in these large groups. So for transportation, this includes things like my gas, my car insurance. If I take public transit um, for some reason, it can come out of this budget category. So anything related to my car and getting from point A to point B. Um, so, and also like car repairs, things like that. So I budget a fair amount and then some months, I only, all I do is buy gas and pay my car insurance. So I have extra that gets rolled over into the balance. So right now I have about $500 in that account. So if I ever needed a car repair or when I have to pay for my car registration, it comes out of that budget. Um, next is personal care. This is things like skin care, shampoo, hygiene, things like that. And I have a line item for a household. So that would be things like paper towels, um, kitchen supplies, things like that. And then my final category in my expenses are luxuries. So these again, are like, I, they, I consider them rolling, um, but there are things in here that I like to remind myself I'm lucky to be able to have and to know that these are things that can easily be slashed in the case that I need to slash my budget. So I have a line item for entertainment. This is like streaming services. It's buying music. If I want to go to concerts, if I want to go to a movie, that type of expense. I have a line item for professional development, which is something a little bit new for me. Um, so this is if I want to join a professional organization or take a CE class that my job won't pay for. My job does pay for a lot of that stuff, but they don't cover everything always. So I have a little bit of bu budget there. Um, I think the most recent thing that I bought out of my professional development money was actually a planner, <laughs> um, which isn't exactly professional development, but I've been going without a planner for a while. And I was like, this is really impacting my work. I need to buy a planner, but I didn't want it to come out of my next budget, which is my man money budget. Um, so I took it out of professional development. Development. My man money budget is kind of a hybrid of like miscellaneous, oops, I forgot that, or oops, I spent way more on food than I thought that I was going to be, and just whatever I want to buy. Um, and the reason I grouped man money all together is some months or some years I spend a lot of money on clothes, and I'm super excited to spend a lot of money on clothes. And some months, maybe I'm going way over, most recently I went way overboard on buying music. And I didn't have enough money in my entertainment budget to buy all of the albums and things that I was buying. So, you know, I took it out of my mad money account instead. Um, so it really is just kind of a catch all. This is my personal spending money, I guess. So those are my expenses and how I think of my expenses. Next are my savings. Um, so these are categories just, I guess, more long or midterm savings. So I have a fund for home maintenance. Previously, this was saving for a down payment and I just kind of switched it over to thinking of it as home maintenance. Um, right now, I'm saving as much towards it as I can because I'm fixing up my condo before I can move in. Um, and so I'm just pouring as much as I can in there. And even once I move in, I want to build I want to build this to have a comfortable buffer. I'm not entirely sure what I want that buffer to be yet, but I'm right now that's where a lot of my, um, not spare, a lot of my savings are going into home maintenance. So I still have it in savings, even though right now it is kind of more of an expense because I'm spending on it regularly. But the intention is once I've moved in and settled, I'll be putting more into households for like small projects and then have a home maintenance budget for um, larger things that I know will come up. I also am saving for a new car. My car is a 2011, I think. So it's over 10 years old and it's still running great for now, but I know it's not going to go on forever. So I've been putting several, a couple hundred dollars aside every month. Um, so that when I do have to purchase a new car, at minimum, I'll have a good down payment. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to just buy a car outright um, when mine dies. And then I have a line um, for vacation. 
which it's very low. My balance is very low. I did go on a big vacation this year. Um, and I planning on doing a bit of traveling next year, but I don't have any like finite plans so right now. I'm not putting a ton of money in there, but I feel better having some, putting some money aside because I know at some point I am going to want to go on a vacation again. Um, then I have a line for my emergency fund, which right now it's fully funded. I have, um, this right now, my goal was six months expenses, which I have more than six months expenses. I think next year, um, one of my financial goals is going to be to increase this a little bit just because it, my job is not a job that you get hired for quickly. It's a fairly long process. I work in higher ed and um, for my job specifically, it's a long timeline. Like the job I'm working now, I think I applied for in like April or May and it took them until the fall to make an offer. And that was a little bit long even for my job, but I mean, from applying to getting hired, you kind of expect it to be three to four months and then to actually start working even longer. So I need to have a fairly robust emergency fund. For a long time, it was 12 months, but I live in a more expensive area and I just bought a condo. So my expenses are higher um, than they had me. Then my mortgage is more than twice what I was paying rent in my old city. Um, so <laughs> six months is still pretty good. I would just, I think eventually I would like to get back up to 12 months though. Um, but we shall see. I also have a life happens budget. This is something, um, so a financial columnist that I used to read a lot was Michelle Singletary and she had this. So, um, right now it's low and it has been for a while. I don't remember why I pulled money out and I never put it back in. So um, maybe that will be another goal for 2024, but we'll see. It's kind of, at this point, I think it's just, oh, this is my $1,200. I just want this $1,200 here every, always. And then I have a line for my HSA. I don't know why it's here. I have money in that. Um, but at one point, my HSA, I was making the contributions on my own. There wasn't one that my um, job paid into directly for me. Um, but now my job puts the money directly into the HSA for me. So I think this is just an artifact. Um, and then sometimes I'll also make little notes here. So this has been on the last several months and this is just kind of quickly looking at what do I need to do for my condo? Like what are my expected expenses for my condo coming up and do I have enough money um, to get there? So, you know, that's what that is. So the most used sheet in my budget is actually my transaction sheet. And this is where I keep track of every penny and where it's from and where it goes. So anytime money moves, whether I'm spending it or earning it or putting it in a different account, it goes in here. I'll put down the date, um, whether the money is coming in or going out of an account. I'll indicate um, where the money is originally coming from. So if it's a transfer, I also note that, but I put that in the vendor category and then I indicate which budget it's coming out of. Um, and that's what powers this sheet. But since my spending categories, my budget categories are pretty broad and I don't have a line for every single way that I spend money on my spreadsheet, what I do is I indicate um, in my tags exactly what that money was spent on. So for instance, if I spend out of my entertainment budget, I will put in the tags what that was from. So I went to a movie, so I put that in movies. In my food budget, I do indicate whether I spend it on eating out or if I spend it on groceries. Um, and that way, I don't think I have a personal care in here, but I'll indicate was this skincare, was it hygiene, was it something else? And so then if I want to, I can use the tags to really drill down and get a more complete idea of where I was spending my money and how that might vary um, over time. So I don't always do that, but sometimes I do. So at the end of every year, I may take a look to see how much of this was I spending. I have, um, I have multiple tags because sometimes there will be an expense that really is more than one thing. I see this especially when I'm like traveling so it will be vacation. Well, it will come out of my vacation budget, but it will be like 
food. Or I also will sometimes have a tag that says specifically what vacation this is. So then later I can say, well, what did I spend on the family reunion? Or what did I spend on going to this country? Um, and then all of those expenses will be grouped together, whether I took it out of the vacation budget or the transportation budget or the food budget. Because when I'm traveling, sometimes I take it out of the food budget rather than the vacation budget, because whether I was at home or on vacation, I'm still going to eat. So this gives me a bit of flexibility of which budget to take things out of um, while still accounting exactly for what I was spending money on, if that makes sense. So I kind of think of my budget spreadsheet as a database. <laughs> I <laughs> like databases. Um, so I kind of built that way so that it's flexible. And finally, I indicate what I count um, the money either went into or came out of. Um, aside from my monthly budgets, um, sheets, and the transactions, I have a dashboard, which I actually haven't been using super a lot um, lately. I started revamping it right before um, I got a new job and moved and I never quite fixed it. But my intention is always to have a running account balance is on my dashboard um, that's a little bit more accurate than my bank accounts because you know like credit cards sometimes take a long time to pend or transfers may not go through for a few days so this is intended to be a bit more accurate view of where my money is going to end up um i in my budget i also have a tab for yearly and this is good way to look at my year in one glance without having to go through a million budget spreadsheets. And I might make a video um, on this um, as a year end wrap up, but I just keep track of all the income for the year. I keep track of my fixed, of my expenses, and then keep track of money that I put in savings. I also have a tab keeping track of my retirement fund. So about once a month, I have very, I have lots of, um, retirement accounts. So once a month I'll go through and put in the balances and see how much I have in retirement. Most of this isn't really accounted for in my monthly sheets because this money generally comes out of my paycheck, but I feel like I'm on track for retirement according to all sorts of rules and thumbs and things like that. Um, this back end is just where I keep track of all sorts of like what tags and budget categories I have. Um, I have an amortization table. So this, I looked at this a lot when I was starting to buy my, con when I was in the process of buying a condo and like looking at things. So I could, I used it to estimate what my payments would be. And like I'd play around with, if I put down this much and it costs this much, how much would it be? And to estimate what the property taxes were, I found the formula for where my area, um, calculated property taxes. So this was actually a lot more accurate than what Zillow would come up with. So I had this and I also have a play budget rather than playing around in individual months. I can play around in here. Um, and then a paycheck estimator that I used when I got a new job or when I'm expecting a raise or something, I use it to just play around. So what if I was earning this much, much a year, how would I, how could I divide things up? Um, what if I want, I'm interested in increasing my retirement contributions? How will that affect my paycheck? And that's kind of fun. So those are all of my pages. But I, I can show you a little bit what it actually looks like when I input a, a transaction. So for instance, I recently got income from a side hustle. I think it hit my account yesterday. So I put in yesterday was the 16th. Got five dollars from D Scout, which is like a um, user experience um, survey type oh, site that I use to earn a bit of money. This is um, a side hustle, so I put it in the side hustle budget, and then later I'll come back and put in the account. But now, if I go look at my December budget, um, we can see. I now have five dollars in um, to spend next month and that's kind of how it works so um thanks for watching my budget tour if anybody <laughs> did watch and um stay tuned because i am going to be having more budgeting frugality related content um 
especially as I start living on my own again and trying to pinch pennies as a fairly average salaried single woman in her 30s. So if that's something you relate to, feel free to subscribe if it's not something you relate to, but you just like watching budgeting videos <laughs> or frugal how to save a bit of money video content, subscribe and I will see you later and hopefully I'm planning on it being in like a week and not in another two years. <laughs> Bye.